This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. One of the more remarkable moments yesterday in the January 6th House Select Committee's investigation uh, looking into the insurrection on January 6, 2021, was a text exchange between Katrina Pearson, a longtime Trump supporter and Trump uh, surrogate, campaign staffer, and Brad Parscal, who was Donald Trump's one-time campaign manager and then campaign bigwig. And I don't know how I want to talk about this, because on one hand, he did feel remorse. He, in these text messages, I want to play a clip of them being read. He felt guilty for having got Donald Trump elected. He felt responsible in some way for the death that took place of Ashley Babbitt. He says with, in text to Katrina Pearson, it was the rhetoric that killed her. Donald Trump's rhetoric killed Ashley Babbitt. And and the reason I I, I hesitate and I'm torn here is because not only did he contact Donald Trump and is now on board to get Donald Trump elected again, he reached out yesterday to Donald Trump to explain away the text messages. These people have a short memory, whether it be Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell or the more political types in the campaigns like Brad Pascal. They are sinister. They are sociopathic in a colloquial sense. I don't think they're clinically that way. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an authority to to make that determination. But it's dangerous nonetheless for us to forget what we witnessed on January 6th. Obviously, on January 6th, it was impactful enough for Brad Pascal to to feel guilty. And then that evaporated into the ether shortly after when he's ready to saddle up and get Donald Trump elected again. Watch this moment from yesterday's House Select Committee hearing. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness You have to show strength and you have to be strong. So I hope Mike has the courage to do what he has to do. And I hope he doesn't listen to the rhinos and the stupid people that he's listening to. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. But we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. White House counsel Pat Cipollone and his deputy did not attend the speech, and they were concerned that the statements in the speech about the election were false. In fact, the message that President Trump delivered that day was built on a foundation of lies. He lied to his supporters that the election was stolen, He stoked their anger. He called for them to fight for him. He directed them to the US Capitol. He told them he would join them. And his supporters believed him, and many headed towards the Capitol. As a result, people died. People were injured. Many of his supporters' lives will never be the same. President Trump's former campaign manager, Brad Parscale, recognized the impact of the speech immediately. And this is what he said on January 6th in excerpts from text messages to Katrina Pearson. Mr. Parscale said, quote, this is about Trump pushing for uncertainty in our country, a sitting president asking for civil war. And then when he said, this week I feel guilty for helping him win, Katrina Pearson responded, you did what you felt right at the time and therefore it was right. Mr. Parscale added, yeah, but a woman is dead. And yeah, if I was Trump and I knew my rhetoric killed someone. When Ms. Pearson replied, it wasn't the rhetoric, Mr. Pascal said, Katrina, yes, it was. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. So there was, there was absolutely emotion there. There was absolutely regret there. In the, on the evening, of the insurrection, after having witnessed the carnage, the violence, 
the unhinged assault on all of our democracy. And then I want to share this tweet with you from yesterday, Elena Treen, who says, Parscal, exactly a month after the January 6th attack, in a statement, quote unquote, to Trump, if they only impeached you twice, you need to run again, because to change the system, you have to kick it in the ass. I would love to be the only president to be impeached three times because history remembers those that don't conform or didn't conform. I'm in, are you? Short memory on him. And then we learned yesterday from Josh Dossey of the Washington Post from this tweet. Brad Parscall called Trump today after text message pre presented by the January 6th committee showed he blamed Trump rhetorics for death on January 6th and said an American president was asking for a civil war, per people familiar. He is expected to continue working for him, two of these people said. So what do we do with these people? What are we to believe about these people? Was his regret legitimate? Was it genuine? And now he just doesn't care? He's willing to work for a man who he believes with his own words is responsible, whose rhetoric is responsible for the death of one of those protesters? Is he that vapid? Is he that devoid of character? It's a question I'll leave to you. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I appreciate you very much. Thanks for joining me today. Um, follow me on social media. I am at Dollamore on Twitter. I am at Dollamore on Instagram and at Dollamore on TikTok. I'd love to see you there. <sighs> 2024 is going to be wild. It's very likely Donald Trump is going to run again, if not for anything, then to avoid investigation or attempt to. We'll see what Merrick Garland, what kind of uh, fortitude he has, what kind of dedication to the proposition of democracy he has. But that is Donald Trump's plan, it appears. Uh, if you appreciate what I do and you'd like to support my work, help produce my work, you can click the join button below this video, become a channel member for as little as $1.99 a month, pennies a day, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.